So when I feel my toenails in my sleeping bag, it usually means they're too long. I'm gonna file my nails down a bit. Body glide, foot glide, anti-blister balm. And it does help. This gets really, 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 really dry and cracky. Once the crease cracks, then it's just miserable. I know that was really fascinating. Swan Valley Center, I'm a huge fan of. I put my tent over here. $10 a night, and there's showers, $4. I can't remember that guy's name last night. He left at like 6.30 this morning. He didn't seem very happy. Or maybe he's just very internal. I started like packing up and I realized I never went over like all the stuff that I packed to eat. I thought, oh, I'll do it later on the trip. But then I didn't want to use up my phone battery. So I have a charger over here. We're going to have to deal with road noise. These were small. And I just wanted to be eating more fish than beef, than any kind of heavy meat for digestive reasons. Alaskan salmon in water these are one of my all-time favorite because you just add water and it's done and i just added warm water it's instant potatoes hence the name i'll dump a bag of the salmon inside of it it's awesome this is one of my favorite things although it does have a strong scent if you read about animals some fancy granola that i got in a huge bag at costco and then i broke it down into little bags representing one for each morning i eat this with uh filtered water from the creek these i just found and I thought they were a great compact ramen style. They're actually more compact than the square kind. These odorless bags, I got it from REI. And in the reviews, people said that they suck after a while. It's so freaking hard to get it to reseal. And let me just tell you, yes, I've probably opened this thing 10 times and closed it. And I'm just finding myself getting really frustrated. Already done turkey bacon. They're lightweight. So you get like seven slices in an already sealed pack. One here, one here, one here. There'll be like four in a row. And I usually cut them. So I'll take a pin and I'll poke a hole and let the air out so they pack better. It's not gonna go bad. These are great, like in the morning for breakfast. Yeah, I love that, love that, love that. I've been carrying them this whole time and I'm not eating them and they're awesome. You pour the oats into your bowl and then you fill water to the water line. Yay, and then you put the water into the bowl. Powdered peanut butter, this stuff rocks. You add a little water and you have creamy peanut butter. It's, it happens super fast. This is like a washcloth. And a lot of times I'm just rinsing the stream. So I'll take this and scrub to get my dead skin that's been baking in the sun. It's lightweight, dries super fast. Little miniature razor blade in there, my little wrap, my little miniature bug spray, band-aids, extra sunblock for my face, zinc oxide, zinc oxide, zinc oxide, that's all I'm gonna say. Some things I wouldn't use in the wilderness, they're for when I go to a place and I want my own shampoo. Miniature toothpaste this is also a soap, it's natural, this is okay for the environment. Face cream, you know, my skin gets dry after you wash it with spring water. My little miniature toothbrush that folds up. Floss, just believe it or not, is for the like my eyebrows and the top of my lip. The fur we get. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. It's actually a brush piece that I pulled out of a brush. My peanut butter squeezies. RX maple almond butter. This is my favorite. They have a lot of different flavors. Quest protein cookie. The chocolate chips do melt. Justin's chocolate hazelnut and almond butter. I just love these, but you really want want to mush it up first before you open it. I actually do it with all these and I turn them upside down, mush them, mush them. So I keep my little, we'll call them bumps <laughs> in a separate thing. All my little uh, gels and stuff and they're all really heavy and you know what? I don't know if I would do this next time. I just, I just wanted to be safe on this ride. I didn't know physically how it would challenge me. So I wanted to make sure I was prepared. Cliff shot gels, double espresso. 100 milligrams of caffeine. They just have a really nice taste. So I bought a box of them and this is like another bump, kind of like this, but this is almost like if I really want to feel like I'm eating something. And this is just, oh my gosh, I'm on a huge climb and sweating like crazy. I need a, you know, a shot. My Cliff Blocks. I always get ones with salt, more sodium, because it's summer, because it'll replenish me since I am a sweaty pig. Because I'm not eating vegetables, is every morning, it's just all kinds of grains are in here. And then I take a noon, this one with the black cap has caffeine in it. By the way, the noon tablets are super bubbly. Already my bottle is like, it's getting firm. So when you let this out, you'll be like, Psh. 
And so I have to like open the lid like four different times. So be careful because it could something could explode. I have my expandable bottle, which I absolutely love. Hydra pack, as you can see, it can collapse when it's empty. I love this. I will not get a solid bottle. No way. I want to be able to look in and see through my water to see if there's any little worms swimming around. And I don't know how people use a solid bottle. I would just never do it. And what's so great is this is so light when it's empty. Some people do bring jars of peanut butter, by the way. That's a common thing. Fritos are really common. My favorite is Trader Joe's blue corn chips. They have the best blue corn chips than anybody. I don't care where you buy. I don't care. Trader Joe's blue corn chips freaking rock. Backpacking, I would eat those with the little packs of tuna fish or salmon. It's delicious. I'm not really interested in like, okay, let's get the stove, let's cook, let's wait, let's simmer, blah. I'm just not really interested in the cooking thing. I don't really like cooking. Many people love to do it. I guess I get to camp and I'm kind of tired and it's just more of a fuel thing, a nutrition thing. And what I'm craving more than anything a lot of times like is like finish setting up everything, put my jammies on and like relax and have an ice cold beer. And then a lot of those dehydrated foods, they're like the bags are awkward, like even though they're lightweight, shoving them in these little packs, but I find them really cumbersome. Don't forget, I'm talking about bike packing. Like if you're bike touring or you're backpacking, you have a nice big whole sack. You can shove all kinds of shit in there. People bring in loaves of bread, okay? People take a whole loaf of bread, which is fine. Just, I can't do that. You can't do that with this bike packing thing. It's all these little sacks you're trying to fit stuff in. It's, it's a real pain in the ass, I'm gonna tell you right now. It's one of the things I hate the most about this. I'm serious. Everyone's designing these long handlebar things with the triangle bag and the seat bag and blah, 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 blah. There's a guy who did it right who was at Bruce's in Missoula and I showed you his bike, that super colorful bike. He made those bags. This would give me the big bag space that you get when you bike tour or a backpack, but still be bike packing. And it was like a huge light bulb. All of a sudden he did something completely different, you know, and he's a fantastic cyclist. Meaning he's not some just dumbass who's tooting around. He's out there doing serious trails. I don't want to do this little bag thing. I can't stand it. But when I'm done with this, I'm going to see if I can somehow create something that he created. But now I'm completely rambling and um, I actually think I'm gonna go have a cup of coffee to calm me down. <laughs> and I need to get the hell out of here. Every time I leave it's like 11 a.m. and I head out into the baking sun. But you know what, who cares? I've been having a blast. That's gonna be your life. You wanna go on my bumpy ride with me? Okay. Come on. Move those leggers, as my mom would call them. Move that ass. Move those feet. Tuck that pelvis. Heels down, heels down. Get your shoulders back. Come on now. This ain't no hack back ride. Let's get up this hill. Oh, yeah. Come on, girl. Focus. Look out, Pookie Bear! Humans are on the loose. Oh, ungrip your handlebars. Piper, creek straight, fatty creek to the right. This might be our turn off. So you get to stop listening to my self-motivational seminar. Cause I need to check where we be going. Good thing I checked, because we do turn here. Ooh, this looks like an intimate road. Whenever I'm traveling, this became my hauler that I would do. I haven't done it, I don't think, on this trip once, but I'll do it now. Nobody's around, and I absolutely love it. Heading up towards Flathead Lake. This represents the type of routes I thought I would be on bike packing. The grass in the center because it's not used a lot. A little more intimate. I'll be curious what the rest of the Great Divide is like heading north. Um, again, I started in Ovando, but before that I was primarily on logging roads, just really wide dirt roads. How gorgeous is this path? 
Oh, the yellow flowers, it's so sweet. I could get like a mountain view to my right without crashing. But because I'm holding just one handlebar with one hand and gravel, gravel is, oh, here's a view spot, maybe. Ah! There's how high we are. We're not as high as those mountains, but I just wanted to show that we were up high and Route 83 is in the flat area below. I pulled over, so I need to get some water. Oh, this is actually really steep. And he bears under the bridge. This is, any snakes? Or cougar? Any animals? No. Oh. oh, yeah, that's ice cold. Oh, that's nice though. Oh, yeah. This colored rock is just gorgeous. It's this one with the big red dot on it. It's cool. The way they shine under the water. You keep a look out that way for grizzlies and I'll keep a look out this way. <laughs> Just riding along. A pookie bear tail. So I'm coming down this road, but I'd heard like a noise. So I pulled over for the waterfall and the look and I'm like, okay, you know, this bag's denting again. Just higher, the Revelate bag. So I'm still having to pull it up off my tire. And then I just happened to look back. My tent is sitting there. Fuck, that would have sucked. The Great Divide has not been like this, but see how it has a deep things here on the left. A lot of gravel, a lot of rocks sticking up. You hit sharp points. This reminds me of the Wild West route. This thing is cinched in really tight and it's really tall. And the fact that that was still able to come out of there just shows you how much vibration choppy these roads are. It's almost animal hour. This guy just came up on me. I hear like, if I was like grizzly, you're heading south, I take it. You're yeah. going all the way to... Antelope Wells. Yeah, you're going to doing the whole thing. Good for yeah. you, wow. You... And you're doing with panniers on your bike. They're heavy. Yeah, they are heavy. I've never seen that with the... Uh, I've seen bike touring, but not bike like, packing. Like yeah. Yeah, but you can't fit nearly as much. No, no, no. You can hear the waterfall was too loud. I couldn't believe he was bikepacking with panniers on the side of his back wheel. He's like, yeah, it's really heavy and tough. And I'm thinking, dude, you have some climbing. Now he is just starting out, well, kind of. He's got a long way to go. So he'll just build up a lot of a muscle. He said there's like a big climb before, right before Big Fork. He said it'd probably take me two hours to get to like where the climb starts. So that's good to know. He said, yeah, it's like 2000 feet. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you've seen nothing yet. Ah, 2,000 feet. I know it's going to be hard, but it's like after 4,500 or after 3,500, some of these climbs I've been doing, I'm like, 2,000? Yay. It's only 2,000 feet. Of course, I don't know how in, how in what distance, right? The amount you're climbing really only tells you how hard it is based on the amount of miles that you're going 2,000 feet, right? So if you're climbing 2,000 feet in 10 miles versus 2,000 feet in 30 miles, well, you know, it's a huge difference, right? One more thing. I download Ride with GPS, the northbound map. First time I'm using navigation because I'm, in this particular section before b below Flathead, it's super like, okay, turn here, turn there. You're not just staying on the main dirt road. So you really want your navigation or I w I'm just stopping a lot to look. And I'm like, I know that, okay, I passed two roads and I'm gonna turn a sharp right. But it's getting a little tight now where it seems to be turning a lot. So I thought, okay, I'll use the navigation. And it's like, neat, 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 neat. Like, what the fuck? I look and it's like it's forcing me to go south. Even though the guy went north, recorded it, and loaded it as northbound. Great divide. The arrows are show facing north. It's downloaded offline. I'm really having issues with every map, not just Ride with GPS. Ride with GPS has been great. I've been able to zoom in, except for the topo maps suck. Yeah, some of these things, like you really need to like download a few of them, do maybe like the week trial, go into the woods by your house or whatever, or into nothing, I and mean, just see how accurate they are and how well you can see when you zoom in, when you don't have a signal, how blurry it gets. Just, you know, one of these things that happen when you're out on the trail. It's not the end of the world. I'd just be doing it the old way. I just wanted to try the navigation for once. Look out, Pookie I just passed two grizzlies. Can you hear them? Sweetie pies. 
They're going off. They're playing in the tree right against this road. Fuzzy, wuzzy, brown, gorgeous color. Two youngins, I mean, they were big, but you could tell they were young, so. I obviously kept pedaling. I didn't want to see the mother. But oh my God, I mean, I actually saw his face and everything, it was right, like they were playing right in there, there, maybe one more down. That's a good reminder that they climb trees. That was my very first grizzly bear. I don't need to see another one, at least not tonight. I just came out of constantly screaming, hey, Pookie Bear, a human is on the loose. And I came across this gorgeousness going on 5.30 and it is really hot out. I'm so relieved to be out of that forest. Constantly yelling for bears. See how open it is where I am now? The road's a little wider. The trees aren't right up against because this is a more populated road. I have yet to find any place where people put a tent. This whole section from when I left that little town. I don't know, I gotta find something. I'm just surprised with all the cyclists that there weren't a couple of spots. We're heading toward the bottom of like some little body of water. Well, it's huge and I can see it down there. It looks beautiful. I hope this isn't one of these things that I'm gonna pass it and you actually can't get down to it. That would suck. I just came to this. So I don't freaking understand. I, I've been in plenty of reserves. Some parking, a porta potty or some kind of bathroom. So here I am on my menstrual cycle thinking, oh good, and there's nothing. I'm thinking I'll just put my tent, put it here. I mean, I guess I could go a little further. It looks like there's another open area. Yay. Definitely much flatter, much more open. It's like 6.30 and I'm just so sweaty. I wanted water so bad. I only have one bottle of water. I'm kind of tempted to just say fuck it and go back. Guess what I'm gonna do? I can go climbing through dirt more that I've just done, or I can go along a really long lake that's gonna be beautiful. So let's get the freak out of here. Finally, oh my gosh. I went a long way on that road. All right, here's the split off. So this is just gonna shoot me right down to 83. And all I know is I'm bleeding. <laughs> I need a bathroom! <laughs> I've only been coming down that hill for two seconds. Two seconds. And you wanna know what I just ran into? Guess where we're gonna be camping? Right over in this corner and we're gonna get in this water. Yeah, baby. Anyway, let's go. Oh, hopefully there's a porta potty up here. I kept going and I thought there'd be a turn in left and then I saw Marsh on the left and I'm like, okay, that's not it. So I turned around. <sighs> A lot of mosquitoes and I asked the guy I'm like how do I get to the river I just want to rinse off and camp he said just before the guardrail there's a little path through the brush oh here it is and that brings you down okay all right it should be interesting with the bicycle a steep drop right there but yes this is <sighs> ah, very thick brush which actually feels good against my skin because I've been bitten so many times. Whoa. Uh, those people are probably gonna be like, we thought we had a place to ourselves. Oh, this is fantastic. I can't wait to get in that water. Oh my gosh. Maybe we'll just go right there. Can you tell the mosquitoes are horrific? Look, I got everything on. These people down here brought me a beer and a cozy. It was so sweet, I was in the river. I'll tell you the story later. Anyway, I'm gonna go down and sit with them and drink a beer and eat my cereal. The mosquitoes are everywhere. This is terrible. Oh. But I did get to rinse off in the river. All right.